Hi, I'm Owen. This is my fourth year in the FIRST program, and this is what I've learned. Hi, um, I'm Owen. I'm a 10th grader at Waring. I've been a part of the robotics program since the start. I did FLL for three years, and this year is my first year on the FTC team. Um, my role on our teams has primarily been robot design. So this is our first robot that we use in our very first season of competition. Um, we called her Charlotte, but she's retroactively been named Stormageddon, Dark Lord of All. Um, the key thing to know about Charlotte is that there was no pre-planned thought or design that went into it at all. Um, essentially, we sat down with a bunch of parts and just put them together until it started driving, and that was that. However, as we found out shortly afterward, that was most certainly not that. We ended up having to make so many changes to this robot um, to get it to do what we wanted it to do. And after adding on feature after feature, it just became big and messy and just not efficient. So we went to our competition. We didn't do very well. We didn't get to move on. And after that, I knew that if we wanted to do any well, we had to fully actually design our robot instead of just winging it. So the very next day after our competition, I spent over 12 hours learning how to use CAD or computer assisted design and then using it to design this robot, Stormageddon Mark II. Um, I designed it while thinking about what I had seen work well at the tournament, as, as well as robots that I'd seen do really well online. Um, one example of something that I took from that was having these small gears on top that could very easily mesh with different mechanisms that were mounted on a shell, and that basically just made the robot modular. So I used this robot along with my partner, Kellen, in the second semester internal competition that Francis was talking about earlier, and we won, but I realized that there were still a lot of things that need to be changed. So after the semester was over, I designed our third robot, Stormageddon Mark III. Um, the main thing was just that Mark III was a whole lot smaller. There was a lot of empty space in the previous design that just got completely compressed. Um, Stormageddon Mark III is the robot that Chris, Peter, and I took to our competitions in our second year. And we ended up getting first place at our state tournament with it, giving us a ticket to the world championships that happened later that year. So at the World Championships, we got 22nd place out of the 104 teams that were there and out of the 40,000 teams worldwide. Although we did really well, again, over the season and at the competition, we had accumulated a list of things that needed to change in future designs. So we took advantage of the fact that we were going up against the best robots in the world, and we took lots of pictures and videos of everything, and we talked to several of the highest ranking teams about why their robots work so well. And when I got back, I spent the summer designing eight, I think, new iterations of the robot based on what we had heard. Um, these robots completely switched up the design language, transitioning from the big hulking machines that we used in our first two years and continuing to become more precise and refined and smaller like the robots that we used in our third year. So here's the result of all those designs, Stormageddon Mark 10, which is the robot that we used in our third year. Some of the key changes that you can see in Mark 10 is just the size. Mark 10 was just so much smaller and so much more precise. And it also got rid of the distance sensor that a lot of the previous designs used and um, switched it with a color sensor on top that could actually sense the color of the attachment shell that was currently on the robot. And that way it knew which program to play. So we got lots of attention for this robot from both the tournament judges and from other teams. One of my favorite moments actually from our tournament was looking up and seeing like several dozen people who we didn't even know um, recording our match. And it was just really extremely fulfilling to know that I had worked so hard to design this robot that was doing so well. So after the COVID lockdown started, our team set our sights on FTC. That meant switching from designing robots that looked like this to robots that looked like this. Um, obviously, that's a big, intimidating gap going from using Lego design programs to design Lego contraptions to using a real-world industry 3D modeling software to design metal robots several times the size. But as I found while making that transition, a lot of the skills just transferred right over. Um, as soon as I learned generally how the new software worked, I was able to fall back on the 3D modeling and design experience that I got from FLL. So after going through many unfinished iterations, learning the intricacies of the software, and getting experience designing this new, entirely different type of robot, in October, over several late nights, I made this. It isn't the finished robot yet, but rather it's the drive face that, will be, that we will be building everything else on top of. So one thing about the FTC robots in general that I just think is so cool are these wheels called um, Mechanum wheels. 
They have small rollers at a 45 degree angle that allow the robot to go in literally any direction. Um, another cool aspect about designing for FTC is that we aren't limited by a parts library. We're able to create our own parts, um, such as these side plates, and I get to make the robot look exactly how I want it to look and function exactly how I want it to function. Um, so that's that's where we are right now. And I'm really, truly excited to see where we get to go in the next few years.